Just gonna turn on the hot water. I hear it. Good morning, modern studders. This morning we need to install a hot cold hose spigot. This is a frost free hydrant. Let me put you down here for a minute. This is a frost free water spigot. I think it measures 12 inches long. So when you turn your nozzle here and shut off your hose, it's shutting off the valve way inside. So this part that's outside, when it's shut off, doesn't have any water in it. That way, being in northern New Hampshire, we don't have to worry about shutting these off in the wintertime. And we can still use our hose spigots in the wintertime. The reason we're doing a hot cold one is because we're going to need warm water when we're harvesting our pigs. And it'll be nice when we're harvesting our chickens too to have warm water. What I normally do is I set up a five gallon bucket outside with hot water from the kitchen sink. Now I can do that all outside. This is going to be awesome. So let me show you what we need to do to get this hooked up. Here is our original cold water hose. We're going to leave this line and use it. I have a shut off valve right here. Boom. That water's off. I'll disconnect that outside. I'll use that one hole. And then I'll have to drill another hole over here for hot water. Let me show you how we're going to do that. Since I did the plumbing in the house, I know where everything is and how it goes, and it makes it easy. We used red and blue packs for the water lines. So that red line right there is our hot water that goes over to our kitchen sink. And there is a shut off for our kitchen sink right there, which won't help us because the water comes from this direction. I'm going to put a T in here. So now we need to find the shut off. Comes here, crosses over there for the laundry room, and there's a shutoff over there for the laundry. I didn't put any shutoffs in the main line except for if we follow the line down where it comes into the hot water tank right there. So we have plenty of shutoffs. The hot water tank right there. So we have plenty of shutoffs. Just turn it off. Boom. What I need to do first is disconnect here. We got our water shut off. There'll be a little bit of water that's gonna try to get us, but it's not gonna be very much. We got, I don't know, about a foot of half inch water line in the house. Perfect. All right, now I can go outside. I wanna bring my drill bits and my spigot with me. Grab our drill. Disconnect our hose. And I need a square bit driver. Gotta go get one of them. Let's see if we can find some. Oops. Believe we have a whole packet of them in here. Not in there. I know we got some. Right here. It's like a Tic Tac container. Perfect. For a while, the square bits were popular, especially in furniture making, they're very popular with the Craigu jig. But now Torx bits have become very popular for regular screws. So that's what we have in here is a bunch of different Torx bits and Phillips head bits. Let's change that one out. Yeah. Now we can remove the faucet. And of course, I don't want any critters getting in there, so I had it siliconed in place. There we go. Now we need to figure out what size bit we use to make the other hole. Let's see, I don't think it's a one inch. I think it's probably an inch and a quarter. Uh, 
inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a quarter. I bet you it's this one. Boom, perfect. I'm gonna make sure this outside faucet is level. So I need to make a level mark of where the top of the hole is. Then we can line up our next one with that. That'll be the top of our hole saw bit. Now we need to mark. Get that lined up. That's gonna be the center of the hole. So center's right here of this hole. Let's line up the hole saw a bit now. Right there, I like it. You wanna start cleaning out your hole saw a bit as soon as it gets filled. You don't wanna wait until we have all the plywood in there too. Every time we get through one layer, we'll stop and clean it out. Got through another layer. She's smoking. There should be two rim boards in there. Another layer. It's the rim board. That's the last one. That was the floor joist. And that's through and it's left inside. Moment of truth right here. Will it fit? Oh no! It fit perfect. I like that. Nice. Is it level? Oh. Let's see. No. What happened? There we go. If you let it sit where it wants to sit, it's not level. If we raise it up, it's nice and level. Perfect. I'll have to get some caulking or some silicone behind here, put it, screw it in place. Make sure it's level because I won't want to look at that. Let me get this weed out of your way. There. I bet your view is better now. I'm happy with that. We don't have silicone, but we have liquid nails. And we're going to use that today. Be careful. We don't want to have it ooze out and get out of control and get on the siding. Put it in place now. Oh yeah, more than enough. Push that one down. And... Make sure it's level. Right there's level. Perfect. I like that. I can bring in all of our tools. Wearing a headlamp so you can see what I'm working on better. Uh, the faucet here, the hydrant part is longer than the old one. Let me bring it up here and show you. So the old hydrant only came to there. This one comes in another six inches, which is a good thing. We'll have to worry about it less of it freezing. It's gonna drain further back into the house, which is nice. So I need to cut back my pecs take off that end, put it on this end, and then we're gonna run the hot water. We bought the faucet on Amazon. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. It is an affiliate link. This is the reason I like PEX. It's easy and quick. It doesn't look as nice as copper, but it's a lot cheaper, and if you're doing your plumbing yourself, it's a lot easier for us to do it. So let's fix this up. Let me show you how I save my picks and fittings. So this is a crimped on clamp. What I do is I take it with a pair of pliers and I twist it. And I bust it up and create some slack. And if I have enough slack right now, I'll just move the clamp out of my way. Just loosens it up. Now you're left with just the hose, but it's been crimped on there, so it's still pretty tight. I take a razor blade, be careful, 
and I make a slit in the pecs. There we go. Now we can reuse our fitting. Clamp, we need to slide that on first. And we can put in the fitting that we took out. I'll show you close up later if we can't see it. The fitting that we're putting on there goes in there and we just squeeze it tight. Just like that, we can hook up this, we'll hook up this fitting. There. Now we can run the hot water line. We had to cut in to our hot water pipe at a 90 degree bend. And in order to do that, we had to add two unions. Now we have one more clamp, the clamp in position. Nice, that works good. Now on the half inch side, we're gonna put a shut off in. We like to have a shut off for every faucet or any ending. So that way if we have an issue with one faucet, we can shut off that one and we don't have to shut off the water to the whole house. So let's get that installed next. We've got our hoses all cut. They're all a little long, but right now they're at a workable length. We're gonna put our end on that's gonna go on to the faucet. Get that on there nice and tight. Get the clamp started. And then we'll just tighten it up. Let's install this on the top side. Remove my hammer so I don't forget where I put it. I'm going to install it from the back side first. I'm going to tighten it up to the faucet. I like using the union fittings, that way if I need to remove my faucet, I don't have to cut anything. I can just unscrew this, put the new one in place. Now we need to figure out the location of our shutoff. Cut it back on this side a little bit. Give us even room to work in the bay with our crimp. This is our last connection we need to make before we need to go outside and try it all out. It's going to be awesome having hot water to our hose. So when we're working outside, we'll have plenty of hot water. Keep all the mess outside. Nice. Let's go turn on the valve over by the hot water tank and we can make sure none of these fittings are going to leak and then we'll do the faucet stuff outside. This will tell us if any of the fittings we put in up to the shutoff are leaking. Check our work. I don't hear any dripping. That's a good sign. No leaks there. Awesome. No leaks on this side. Let's go outside now and check out the faucet. We need a Phillips head screwdriver. Perfect. Let's see if we can get this loosened up so we can remove that tag. I don't want to just rip it off because it was inside. See, it was all in stuck inside and I didn't like that. When I was turning the valve, I could feel it. So I lied, you want the hose kicked forward so it drains the water out. And that's the way it is. I was saying you want it inside, you don't. You want it outside so it shuts off inside and drains it out. Let's put on our hot water handle. Make sure they're all off. Now we'll go inside and turn it all on. 
Let's turn on the water. No drips. Awesome! Boy, did I make a mess. Let's put everything back where it belongs. And that way, next time we know where everything is. Me and Olivia are gonna need the hammer tomorrow when we're making our chicken tractor. Woohoo! So don't forget to be watching Sunday's video. We're gonna be making a chicken tractor that you can make for $30. You can go to the store and buy everything you need. It's gonna be epic. Just wait. Yeah, a chicken tractor that can hold 25 meat birds that you can build for $30 or under depending on where you buy everything. And everything that's going to be made out of you can buy from the local hardware store. This isn't any scraps that you need or you got to have stuff lying around the house. Let's hook the hose up and check out the hot water. Oh no, it don't fit. No, I'm just kidding. It's a regular garden hose. We have a new hose for the pig harvesting class. We got a food grade hose. We'll use this one for testing purposes today. I'm just gonna turn on the hot water. I hear it. See if it's warm. It's dirty. Cleaning out everything. Oh yeah, warm water outside. That's nice. We have hot water outside. This is going to make it so much nicer when we're harvesting any of our animals or when you're cleaning any of your produce that you need. If you're washing your car, this is going to be awesome. Hot. Ooh, that's burning me. Perfect. That's a pretty good setup right here. When I first turned it on, I saw it leaking, and I was like, oh man. What it is is, it builds up pressure, and it won't leak. And watch when I shut it off, because it's a hydrant hose. It leaks here, so it builds up pressure and it seals, and when there's not enough pressure, it opens up and it lets the water drain out, so you don't gotta worry about your faucet freezing up on you. That's a good idea. That's nice and warm. So that's a mixing valve. So if I wanted to cool it off, I can add cold water. Moen makes one. That's a self mixer and it mixes the water for you. That one's like 400 bucks. That one was only 100. That's expensive enough. I'm not spending $400 on one. I can mix it myself with my two hands. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I know all the modern steaders that are coming for the three day pig harvesting class, they're gonna appreciate and enjoy having warm water out to the outdoor kitchen when we're taking care of the pigs. The pigs. The pigs. Bright spots. Yep. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it. It's really helping the channel grow. We wanted to thank all the modern steaders for that. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and our website, www.lumnaacres.com. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.